Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. It's finally time for one of the most anticipated videos of the year, revisiting Windows Defender. But there's an additional catch, this time we'll be testing it with the Sandbox. This is a change that was first introduced in October 2018, primarily, I think, to protect Windows Defender against exploitation by malware because there have been attacks in the past where malware has managed to get past the self-defense, and this is primarily a response to that. But what it also claims to be able to do is isolate applications that you run in the app container, thereby limiting its effects on the rest of the system. Now I've been waiting for this to be enabled by default in any Windows release, but I don't think that has happened yet. But we're going to do it anyway. I already have it enabled on this system and you can do it on yours. You just have to run a simple command in PowerShell. This is what you want to be typing. To disable, you just use zero instead of one. Now once you have it enabled, this is what it should look like, and I'll show you that on this system that is indeed the case. So we have the anti-malware service executable, which is the primary process. It's running at system level, and then we have the app container. Both of these combined seem to take between maybe 160 megabytes to I'd like to say maybe 250 which I think is perfectly reasonable. And today we'll finally get to see it in action against malware. Other than that, Windows has been doing a lot of stuff with its malware signatures lately. They've outsourced it to a lot of companies. There's more on this later. But for now, what you need to know is that they've been adding a lot more signatures than before. So we should see the detection ratio go up. I will show you that everything is up to date. As you can see in last check just a few minutes ago, and now we're ready for the test. But wait, Windows Defender hasn't exactly had a great track record at TPSC. I think it's never managed a clean sheet so far. In this test, obviously we're not testing it in the default configuration, we're testing it in the ultra secure mode with the sandbox, but I still think that might not be enough. So, you know what, in order to give it some encouragement, I'm actually giving Windows Defender an unfair advantage that I don't give any other product, which is to actually have its wallpaper on the system. Maybe it's nervous, maybe it doesn't feel at home at TPSC, I just want to make it feel comfortable, so there you have it. We have the nice Microsoft logo, it's shining, it's shining on our tools, it'll be shining on the malware soon. Hopefully that's going to be enough to protect our system. Now I'm going to follow standard procedures. For those of you who are not familiar with TPSC tests, the way I usually run these is I turn the product off for a second just so I can grab my malware. Don't worry, this is only temporary. I will actually re-enable it before we execute anything. It's just to give me a window of time to be able to grab my malware without it interfering. So in this folder I have, I think, 1581 items. All of this is fresh malware. I collected it a few minutes ago. As you can see, there's tons of stuff here. And I've actually renamed the files differently after some of the concerns that you guys have raised in the last video. So we're no longer using malware123 and so on. We're actually using just the SHA1 hash that each of these files have as the file name, which is just good research practice anyway. Now, of course, I'm not going to be executing these one by one. So we have a script that's going to automate all of that, which is malix. It's on the desktop and all I have to do is say python malix.py and that's going to launch it. As you can see, we have a check in place here. Just make sure the real time protections turned on. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to say yes and it should start executing the malware. I will open task manager just so you can see the resource usage in real time. We're just sorting by highest CPU activity. As you can see, it is Windows Defender here, anti-malware service executable. Interestingly, there are two processes. They both seem to be at similar CPU activity. So far, the test seems to be progressing all right, but it's fairly slow in comparison to a lot of the other products that I test. Of course, that's not significant. It just tells you how it deals with the malware. Maybe Windows Defender does a more in-depth analysis before it quarantines stuff. But the proactive detection, interestingly, is sitting at 88%, which is quite low. We'll see if that goes up as the test progresses. We do have some processes that have already managed to successfully execute. This is where the sandbox is going to be tested. We'll see if that is able to contain the damage or if malware is able to run riot. Now 
windef.exe, interesting. Malware is already masquerading as Windows Defender. And that was not intentional. Uh-oh, we have cascading I.O. errors. This reminds me of Windows XP again. Those were the good old days. There was no Windows Defender back then. And I guess there isn't one now, at least not one that can stop this. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is actually so much fun, not gonna lie. I don't get to see this kind of action on a daily basis anymore. Usually it's just boring threats, financial malware. No good old wreck the system. But this one's good. We've got a nice waterfall over here. Again, we'll see if there's any permanent damage from this or if this is just going to go away on restart. But it's also interesting to note that we're only at 6% and the system has completely slowed down. Hopefully it's not going to crash. That is my worst fear that we'll not be able to complete a task again. That is one of the issues I've had with Windows Defender in the past, which is part of why I don't have a solid proactive detection rate for it like I do for most of the other products. It's just because I haven't been able to complete a task from start to finish because the system dies somewhere in between. I'm really hoping that today that's not going to happen. We'll be able to get to 100% and then do our analysis. Not sure if you guys saw that, but there were actually a couple of interesting alerts popped up by the AV on my main system, which is connected to the virtual machine, of course. And we do have a shared folder that this VM can access. So there were a couple of VBS scripts. It's just something interesting to note that this is how malware can spread. It isn't always because someone on the computer itself goes on the network and does something. Sometimes it's just that there's one infected computer, let's say in the entire enterprise or in your home network or in a school or whatever, and it creates infected copies in the network drives for the other computers. And that's how the infection spreads. Sometimes it can be tricked into some kind of an auto run situation. Sometimes it's just accidental execution. There are a lot of ways in which malware can propagate between computers. Of course, these days, attack are much more targeted, but keep in mind that targeted attacks do attempt to infect other computers in a specific organization. So even though they might not be generalized to the entire public, if one of the machines on your enterprise gets infected, you're in a very high risk situation. So you want to have your policies in such a way that you can isolate systems when that happens. That's why it's really important to have good security practices across the board. Okay, so it looks like for some reason the task stopped abruptly at 77%. But at the moment, the proactive detection is sitting at 92.56%. I think this is what we'll have to go by for the final numbers because the test was incredibly slow. And I know it's becoming a bit of a cliche, but this literally took forever. Luckily for you, future Leo will put you in fast forward mode. But let's see, uh, what is the state of the system? 
I don't think we need a lot of second opinions to figure that out, honestly. Doesn't look uh, very nice to me. If we take a look at our data, it's actually been encrypted. Let's uh, try and open it. See if it's actually gone or if it's just renamed. No, it's uh, it's actually gone. So before encryption, this would say something like your files are safe. If you can read this, nothing has been encrypted. But as you can see, that has been overwritten with a ransom message. So we have active ransomware on the system. What else have we got? Something happened to our cascading waterfall. That's a bit of a shame. Now I think I'm going to restart the system and get into the full analysis mode, run CCleaner, delete the files on the desktop. Not the new files, obviously, but the files I dragged in in the classified folder. After that, once we've cleaned out the temp files, we'll start doing our second opinion scans and let's see what they tell us. Um, the last trick that Windows Defender might have in its sleeve is the sandbox. So maybe if I restart the system, a lot of the malware is going to go away. But here's the thing. My data has already been encrypted, so I don't think that worked out. But we'll see if any of the other damage is mitigated or if this is a full-blown infected system with all sorts of startup items. We'll just have to wait and find out. Okay, so no, the sandbox didn't prevent stuff from starting up by default. That's for sure. Okay, so we're still detecting malware. It's funny because I got this alert a long time ago as well. Windows Defender is still removing threats. I'm going to try and delete the classified folder. Needless to say, this is a complete mess. Threats found, start actions. Okay, so I can't even delete <laughs> the folder of malware. Again, if you're new to the PC security channel and you haven't seen a lot of my tests, this is not how it usually goes. I would strongly recommend that you watch some of the other videos I've done recently for some context because I use the exact same procedure for all the products that I test. It's the same script, same number of files, and usually it's not this hard. You know things are bad when you have to type explore.exe to open file explorer just to be able to navigate somewhere in your system. And you know things are worse when even that doesn't work. Okay, the system just black screened. Task Manager is still running, and Windows Explorer is taking up all the resources. There's only one thing left to do, and that is reset the system again. Okay, managing expectations now. I'll be happy if it starts up, and if I can do my second opinion scans. At this point, if I can just do the second opinion scans, I'm really happy. <laughs> All right, let's go. Second opinion scanners. Hitman Pro. Norton Power Racer. I'm not going to do malware bytes because it takes a lot longer and I have a feeling we might not need a lot of second opinions to tell us what's going on on the system. Okay, interestingly, Norton Power Racer couldn't even finish the scan because its definitions were corrupt. Maybe the viruses are messing with it actively, but we did manage to get Hitman Pro to complete, so we'll just take a look at that. It seems we have a lot of things running at startup. All of this is active malware, active malware in program data. We have a new drivers folder, a new services folder, resources, a lot of DLLs, a lot of active stuff in temp. Again, update roaming, Trojan, malware. This looks like it's some kind of a cryptocurrency miner. More active malware, bin.exe running from update roaming, app launch.exe, tons and tons of random names, service task.exe, that's a good one. System properties performance.exe 
random folder just created in my users. We still have one file in classified that we cannot delete because it is active. Cloud experience host broker. Now there's another interesting thing I noticed. I think the malware infected OneDrive and a lot of the stuff associated with it. So I was getting some weird pop-ups from that. And then the picture seemed to be overridden with EXC. This is interesting. This is not very common behavior. Even the icons weren't spared. If we keep going, more images that have been converted to viruses, essentially. Synchos.exe inside Chrome. It's, it's all over the place, really. I mean, nothing got spared. I'm surprised the system's even running at this stage. And this one, we saw it pop up a few times. Java update.exe. So overall, um, this is essentially the polar opposite of what I like to call a clean sheet. We didn't even get to finish the scans. I guess it just gave up because it was taking too long. But yeah, those are the final results. It's uh, quite incredible considering we had cloud delivered protection, tamper protection, all of this enabled and active. It's almost like real time protection didn't even work. Well, it did. It did block a good like 91% of the malware, but the other 9%, which is a pretty significant number given the number of samples we tried, they just completely ran over the system like a bulldozer. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. I'm well aware that Windows Defender has got some good results in other lab tests recently. But, um, well, what you see is what you get with the PC security channel. I just do the tasks live on video and I comment on what I see. And uh, based on what I see, these are not very good results. I'm curious to find out why. As far as I can guess and keep in mind, I'm not in any way, shape or form involved with the building of Windows Defender. So I have no idea how this works, but I'm just guessing that the problems we're seeing have more to do with the way it's engineered rather than just the fact that it's missing files. I think there's something more important going on. Maybe the protection is too reactive. I'm not sure. But if you work at Microsoft or you're part of the core development team and you think you might know why, I'm more than happy to assist in any way I can. And I know some of you at this point are probably questioning the test and the test method. But again, what you need to keep in mind about that is this is not an isolated test. I run dozens of tests just like this and not all products seem to react the same way. And even if they did, that would be a problem. Now for the extended segment, which I almost forgot, I'm going to switch to the clean system from the previous snapshot and I'll show you a couple of things. Okay, so what I was supposed to show you was a few files that are detected by Windows Defender in isolation in Varse Total when it's not detected by any other AV engine. There's just some examples of false positives, but it seems like they've removed those. So I'll just tell you about what I've been noticing. So one of the things you might be thinking when it comes to Windows Defender is that it's exclusively maintained by Microsoft. And that is actually not true. The malware analysis or reverse engineering, adding signatures, stuff like that is actually outsourced to a lot of software consultancies, many of which are in India. How do I know this? Funnily enough, one of my friends actually works in uh, one of those companies. Now recently, Windows has been adding a lot of machine learning to their process. I think they mentioned that they're next gen AV in that article I showed you earlier. They've been hitting a lot of false positives, similar to what you see a lot of the AI engines hit. Of course, they're manually whitelisting at a pretty good pace. As you can see here, this is no longer detected, but at some point this was actually detected by Microsoft. I think it was detected by some kind of ransom signature. But the point is, on one hand, it's great that Microsoft has a lot more people working on it than just people at Microsoft. But what that also means is that signature quality isn't particularly very good. And the worst thing is, I trusted you. I gave you your own wallpaper and you couldn't even keep it for the whole test. It was replaced by ransomware at some point. So that is definitely sad. Again, I'm more than open. If you're someone on the Windows Defender team and you're watching this, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help in any way possible. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the PC Security channel to stay on top of cybersecurity. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure. Yeah, I mean, he's fairly lower than us, so if he does go up, <laughs> I'm not sure if he's going up. He's <laughs> probably. Nah, he's just sinking. Yeah. <laughs>